What is up guys, Enrique from DSM Tool here and welcome to today's video. I appreciate the fact that you took the time to click on this video because today I will show you how to properly market research a niche and a product. If you're a dropshipper from eBay, this video is gonna actually help you. Now, if you're new to the channel, maybe consider hitting the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell button because we're constantly going live every single week and we're constantly posting content for you every single week. So today's topic is popular products to sell on eBay and learn how to find trending niches. Let's begin. All right, so today you will learn the following topics, guys. Number one, difference between sniping method and market research. Number two, what is Terapeak and how to get it. Number three, how to search for a trend. Number four, how to analyze two niches to find the most profitable one, profitable one for you. And fifth, how to quickly do a sniping process within the chosen niche. So if you're ready, please hit that and smash that like button so we can go ahead and begin. So let's start. Let's begin by actually addressing the difference between sniping method and the market research. All right, so first off, sniping method is actually in three simple steps. Number one, you find sellers or competitors. Number two, you analyze their stores. And number three, you find good products to source from their stores. For example, you can find different items such as glasses, let's say, you know, slippers, uh, you can find lights, doesn't even matter. It could be any products out of any category. That is the sniping method. You don't actually look for a category, you look for a product itself. And you base it off on finding a good seller, a good enough seller to analyze his or her store and then finding the best selling products. Then you have a niche research. This is basically analyzing a category of products to determine the market size, total sellers, total amount of sold, active listings, and so on and so forth. Now, all these aspects are investigated within the niche, as you can read here. You will find different items within the same category or within the same niche. For example, since we're in December, let's say we want to look for Christmas decorations. That is our category. You can find different type of products over here, but they're all linked under the same category. So this is the difference between niche research and a product or sniping method research. So now let's go to the next slide and let's, let's talk a little bit about what is Terapeak. So Terapeak is a marketing tool empowered by eBay and it gives you insights on what to sell, how to sell and when to sell an item. So let me give you further notice on what this is. There you have it folks and it's going to be in the description down below every single link that I will showcase on this video. You can see here the videos placed on what is Terapeak and why use Terapeak on eBay, right? You can scroll down and read all of the benefits. However, you can scroll down over here. You can see that Terapeak, right, is available if you have any eBay store subscriptions. You can start by having the, you know, the basic subscription all the way to enterprise subscriptions, but also if you're not a seller, you can still have it. As you can read here, you can pay $12 per month for an annual plan or $19 per month with no commitment. So even though you're not a seller, you can still use this awesome tool. Okay, now it's time for me to tell you how you can access Terapeak. Let's go to the eBay Seller Hub. For those of you who don't know, once you start your seller account, for example, on eBay, you have access to this seller hub over here where you can pretty much be on top of your sales, your tasks, your orders, the traffic you're getting, listings, and so on and so forth. Now, on the upper side here, on the upper right side, you'll see this button called Research, and then you have this drop-down list. Just click on this link where it says Terapeak Product Research, and then you'll be directed to this page where you can pretty much analyze any keywords on any product or any niche, any category. You can also search on each on uh, the last seven days, 30 days, 90 days, or the last year. I always suggest you guys, to, if you want to see a trend, and, you, and if you want to get to know the trend better, have a, a better view of it, Always search under the last 365 days if you're looking for a niche. And I'll explain that later on. And then you have your advanced searches over here. You can search on a bare minimum price all the way up to a maximum price you want to search for. And then you can you have different uh, options here where you can choose. Now back to the presentation, guys. 
Let me explain, first of all, what is a trend or how to search a trend. So in general terms, a trend is a direction something is developing or changing. So anything that's trending is normally something that is hot right now or something popular right now. So for example, if you watch Netflix, like I do, you know there's actually an awesome show that everyone's talking about right now and that show is the queen the queen's gambit right it's all about chess it's an awesome show if you haven't seen it i recommend it to you guys it's awesome so one of the options or at least one of the examples i want to choose when it comes to trending niches on ebay is since right now since this is popular for chess sets so that is going to be one example of one niche that we're going to analyze now it's time to compare a different niche to see which one is more profitable at least for us or as you as a beginner now for that i normally go to google trends over here so let's head over to the page and you can pretty much see daily trends over here and on which country in this case since we're drop shipping on the US, then let's look for trending niches in the United States. So if you scroll down, you can see what is or what are the trending topics on it. In this case, I wanna choose this one over here. Over here, this is soccer. I love soccer. And as you guys know, if you follow that sport, the Champions League is being right now played. Uh, Real Madrid actually got to classify for the uh, another stage of the of the Champions League. So maybe we can focus on soccer jerseys. That could be a different trend that we can look upon to. But before we go ahead and start comparing these two niches, I want to give you an example, and I want to show you how to start searching. Number one, let's say that since we're in December, let's say we want to look for Christmas ornaments or Christmas decorations, right? So what you do is you place that over here, Christmas decorations, there you go. And we want to see a trend. Like when it comes to see the trend, we want to actually uh, have a view of the full year. So let's put the last 365 days to see how that trend was actually growing. So we place that here. Then on advanced searches, always search for new products and fixed price. And then just simply hit on the research button right here. And then you will be given the following information. As you guys can see here, you have all the listings. Now a few, po a few key points that I want to actually advise you to always look for when it comes to niche research is number one, you can see a total sales, right? Total number of items sold under this niche within 365 days. You have 319,000 total sellers on this niche, 20,000. And over here you have the full market size of this niche, which in this case we have $5 million, 5,426,700.31 to be accurate as you can, as you guys can read it right here. Then if you wanna have a better view of the niche, you can pretty much see the sales trends. If you go over here and you activate it, you'll be giving awesome charts over here. So what you can take away out of the four charts given is first one is the total sold where you can see clearly the trend that actually went up over here this is the, li the line that you always need to check up on as you guys saw obviously since we're in december it kind of picked up uh over september and it kind of went up and up and up as you guys can see here but then this is very important that this doesn't mean that this is still going up as you guys can see here the peak, it was pretty much by November 29th, and it started going slowly down. And according to TerraPeak, the final peak is on December 10th, which is today's date. So this means that even though this had an awesome trending uh, movement or momentum over here between October all the way to November, by now, this is slowly coming down so we need something that is actually going upwards not downwards as you guys can see so let me give you further explanation on how this works by using the chess sets and the soccer jerseys as an example let's go using the example of chess sets and then soccer jerseys two different niches by scrolling down you can see that the market size over here is for 2,052,139 and take a look over here on soccer jerseys, scrolling down, it's a little bit bigger for 
469, right? So this is the first part I want you guys to see. Then let's see the trends over here. Let's see the trend line. On chess sets, if we go over this chart, you can see clearly that there is a peak, right? This is going upwards. This is mainly because of the show on Netflix, right? So the peak was about two days, two, two or three days ago on December 7th, December 8th. And it kind of went down, but but still, it is still going upwards. So it's a very good trend. As you guys can see, this is not bad at all. Now, over here on soccer jerseys, let's see. By going to the total sold and the trend line, you can see clearly that within this, uh, within November 25th and then November 27th and so on, there was a high peak and it's still very good over here in December. However, on today's date, December 10th, there the total amount sold is 133. There was a decrease, a small decrease here. Versus over here, there is actually a peak of 254. What this means is that between these two niches, they're pretty good. They're actually a trending niches based on the trend line. However, when it comes to chess sets, this is steadily and slowly growing. So in, long, in the long term, this could benefit you as a seller. Another key factor to always take a look at is what we call penetration difficulty, where we analyze the level of competition there is within the niche. To actually analyze that, just scroll over to this graph over here, where it's called market share, right? So as you can see, the 10% over here, 10% of sellers represent 78% of sales, meaning that out of the 100% of sellers there are within this niche, this 6,683, 10% of that represents almost 80% of sales. And this is on chess set. When it comes to soccer jerseys over here, the 10% represents 73% of sales, so it's a smaller margin. So the smaller the market share is for the biggest seller in that niche, the more chance we have to make a sale as a smaller seller. Let me show you how we can pretty much determine how much market share we could have as a smaller seller. So let's whip out the calculator right here. And for chess sets, we can see that 78% of sales is represented by 10% of, of sellers. So what we do is that out of the 100, we subtract 78%, and what we have left is 22%. This means that smaller sellers, or in this case us, we, all, we could have 22% of market share within the chess set niche. There we have it. Now, if we do the same thing, the same equation over here on soccer jerseys, we have 73. So we go place 100 minus 73. We have 27% of market share. So there is a higher chance of us making some sales on the soccer jerseys niche than on chess sets. Okay, so we're back now at the presentation of today. It's time for us to take a quick look into the key factors that we just analyzed. So, we have chess sets and then we have soccer jerseys with the benefits. As you guys saw, the market size on chess sets is a little bit smaller than the market size on soccer jerseys, but not by much. The trend line over here, you see that there's a small peak still uh, at the current date of chess sets, meaning that this has a little bit of more chances to steadily grow in time. However, in soccer jerseys, there was a small decrease. But still, guys, for those of you who follow this sport, when it comes to one of the most popular championships there are, Champions League, this is coming back in February, so there is a still there is a chance that this might go up again. When it comes to market share, you can see here that you have a smaller chances on a, with a 22% on this niche. And here you have a bigger chance on 27%. It might be because of the market size, but still, you have further chances to make sales on the soccer jersey. But for me, I would say that either one, you can still make good sales. All right, guys. So a different key factor that we always need to analyze when it comes to market niche as well is what we call active listings. But before we get into any of it, let me explain a different concept. And this concept is called search engine optimization. This is what we have here. So search engine optimization, it's all about driving some organic traffic into your store. There is no need to make payments on advertisements. 
right? So the ideal here is to try to minimize any costs you have, maximize your profits, and work around organic growth. So as you guys can see here, search engine optimization is all about being on the, in the, the first results or the first positions of the search results, trying to optimize your store, and I'll get into that in just a second, providing links, having great content, meaning having great products to showcase, also, pages rank, the idea is to rank in the first search results, having the first positions available, and obviously the keywords, which is very important. In this case, keywords plays, play into what is called the title optimization of your product. Okay, so just to give you a general idea of what search engine optimization on eBay is, you can read here this amazing article that we have on the Dropship Academy. The link is going to be in the description down below. You can read in depth and in details how this works and what it is. And as you guys can see, the parameters that you can optimize before publishing your listings is the price, the title, images, category, this is very important, and the specifics as well, very important, and the product description. Now, the idea is to appear in the first search results of eBay and where you can work around the title, having a great title, uh, being competitive when it comes to pricing, meaning that you have to be a little bit cheaper than your competition. Uh, the item description, the image you choose as a main image, and other images to showcase the product, and so on and so forth. So we're back here at Therapy, guys, and what I want to discuss quickly is what is the metric to analyze the level of competition of search engine optimization uh, on the niche, right? Which I just covered up a couple of seconds ago. To do so, head over to Active here, and then show current trends. So you have this graph right here. In here, you can see the level or the amount of active listings there are within this niche, right? So there are 10,934 active listings on chess sets. Let's check up on, on soccer jerseys. Let's see, show current trends. And we have a total of 24,272 listings active. Currently, it makes sense because obviously this has a bigger market size. Now, again, the the more listings there are, or the higher the number over here is, it is a little bit harder for you to compete with search engine optimization, which means that you will need to optimize everything properly. So I would advise you to head over to this complete guide to check up on how to work your search engine optimization. That way you can have further chances to appear in the first search results and still manage to square up some awesome sales. Now we're getting towards the end of the video. In this case, we are going to discuss how we are going to snipe or get a product out of the niche that we chose. In this case, I chose soccer jerseys, right? So in here, what you need to do is the following. Instead of having the last 365 days, we can try to look for um, items, right? Items within the last month or the last seven days. Let's use the last 30 days, right? Now in here, always have active new products and fixed price. In here, it's time for you to put a bare minimum. Now, I always choose $10 as a bare minimum and I'll explain why. The reason behind this is that normally when it comes to eBay, you might find a very awesome product that is making some sales, right? However, if you find an item that is below $10, you need to take into consideration that when you start sourcing that item in a different marketplace, for example, AliExpress, there are supply costs incurred, meaning that the product cost in AliExpress, shipping costs if there are any, and the PayPal along with the eBay fees. So the idea behind this is that if you find a product below $10 on eBay and always keep in mind that you want to be competitive with your competitor, you know, I'm sorry for being redundant, but yes, you want to be competitive towards the other seller. You want to sell cheaper. So most likely you will not gain any profit at all. So the idea is to gain as much profit as possible. So anything above $10 will ensure you to at least get some profits, right? So that is your bare minimum over here, 10 bucks. And you can go for as, you know, as a bare maximum, let's say 30 to 50 bucks. I would say $50 uh, just in case. And then over here, it's time for you to sell, uh, to place the seller's location. Now, in this case, I'll quickly talk about what you do if you're using AliExpress as your main supplier. So as you know, AliExpress is a different marketplace, right? Which is a, which is China based pretty much. 
So the idea here is to work with price arbitrage where you can find a product on eBay, a very good product, and you can find that same item on AliExpress at a lower cost, meaning that you can maximize your profits. So if you want, if you're using this source, then in case in this case, you'll have to place as an item's location or seller's location, China. And there you have it. Once you've done that, just click here, this button research, and it's time for us to delimit the market. So over here, you can see that the market just went down to $2,713. That is the market size, so it went down because we're actually delimiting the market. So at this point in time, it's time for us to look for a proper uh, product. Now, this is the most important part for me. The total sold means the total demand the specific product right here is having towards the last 30 days. So for me, just try to look for a product between, let's say, 20 to 30 uh, sales all the way to 60. Because sometimes you might find items that have over 100 uh, total sold. That means that there are more demand. And when a product has a lot, a lot of demand, that means that there are much more competitors within that trying to sell that item. So your chances to, to make any sale on that item go uh, decrease a lot. So you're trying to find a product that has some good demand over here, but a low competition. That's what we call a uh, high demanded or at least medium demanded product with a low competition. And as a beginner or as a small seller, this is very important. All right, so it's time for us to search for a product. And maybe let's use this one. It has 56 sales overall in the past 30 days. Pretty good. Not too high, meaning that there's not too many competitors and not too low, meaning that there is a good demand. So over here, you can see the price. You can see the total amount sold overall, 56. 56 out of 56. So we have here that there were 56 sales in the past 30 days, and there were actually 56 sales overall. So that is awesome. 12 views per hour. That, that is great. This is a demanded product. So a thing that you always want to do is try to find another or other dropshippers to compete against. Let's let me let me go ahead and get this straight. When it comes to eBay as a marketplace, right? You have the regular sellers and then you have dropshippers. One way to identify who is a dropshipper is by scrolling down and watching the item's location. You go here, shipping and payments, and if you find that the item's location is from China, most likely that is a dropshipper, right? Also, seller's location, for example, the countries well known to have a lot of dropshipping uh, activity are Morocco, Lithuania, Israel, uh, Europe as a whole, for example, and, and the US as well. So, even though you might not find or you might not know if that person is a dropshipper or not, you might still find the same item on a different marketplace, let's say uh, let's say AliExpress, under a cheaper cost or a lower cost and try to compete against them. Let me introduce you quickly to an awesome tool that I always use when it comes to looking for other products in AliExpress. It's called AliTools, and there you have it. It's going to be in the description down below. This is a price tracker extension, which you can install completely for free. You can be on top of uh, the price history of a product, the price tracking of a product also. You can analyze the seller, meaning the supplier. That is very good. It's also is very, very good and important to analyze the seller and try to find a reliable supplier. Also, if you scroll down, you can see that you can pretty much also analyze uh, the images. So I'll teach you how this works. So for example, which I already have Alitus installed, if I go over the image right here and you see that magnifying glass right here, it says find on AliExpress. What this does is it sends the image, it analyzes the image, and it will show you different suppliers on AliExpress who sell the same item or at least something similar under a cheaper cost normally, right? Now it's time for us to look for the same product or something similar under a lower cost. And what you can do if you want at the beginning is you can scroll here, place this option cheap first, and there you have pretty much the same item at a lower cost. Now, one of the principles I always say is when it comes to finding a reliable supplier, trying to find a supplier that not only offers a lower cost or lower price for the, pro for the product, but also has at least more than 10 orders. If you can find a supplier over here that has more than 100, even better, but the more order orders that supplier has, the more reliable it is. Speaking of which, if you want to know exactly the checklist on how to find a reliable supplier on dropshipping, 
on AliExpress, you have available this awesome article, which I will place it on, on the description down below, where you can read exactly what you need to check to find the best supplier so you can source the item and drop ship it onto eBay. Okay guys, quick pro tip. If you find a product that is that has an item's location based on the US and you're using as a source a US retailer such as Amazon, for example, you have this awesome Chrome extension right here that does pretty much the same thing as Alley Tools, which I already showed you how it works, and you can add it to your Chrome extensions completely for free. The link is going to be in the description down below. So let's use Morocco. Just hit the research button over here. And let's find a proper product. Okay, let's see. You know what? Let's use this one, Argentine Maradona. Okay, so based on the sniping method to do this quickly, remember that this is based on finding a seller. In this case, we have this seller right here. Analyzing the seller store and finding the best selling products he or she has to try to snipe those products. And as you guys see here, this guy is based in Morocco. Most likely, he is a drop shipper. See? So then you go to items for sale and you can see which are the items that this person has so far. Uh, as I can see, so far we have only one. Let's see, all list is we have only one. But anyway, what you will find here is a number of products being sold by the same seller and you will try to find which is the best selling product and obviously try to find out if you can make some profits out of it. So this is what we call the sniping method. Finding a seller, analyzing the seller's store and finding the best selling products so we can dropship those items into our store. So before we end up this video, a quick summary of what we learned today. Before anything, we learned the difference between sniping method and market niche research. Secondly, what is TerraPeak, which is an awesome marketing tool how to search for a trend as you guys saw and how to analyze a niche in a trend as well. We analyzed two niches. In this case, we had chess sets and soccer jerseys, but you can use any other trend. You can use Google Trends to look for something that you want to compare with. And last but not least, how to quickly do the sniping process Okay guys, so that is all for today's video. Hope you liked the video. If you felt that this video actually helped you understand everything you need to understand when it comes to market research, hit that like button if you feel generous. It's gonna help us tons to grow because we want to get more and more audience. Subscribe and hit that notification bell button because we're constantly going live and always placing new and new content for you guys. Thank you so much for being here and see you in the next one.